Welcome to my channel. I just got this package from mm, Trashinery. FYI, for the bag making, you can skip to 230. Fashionery is a well-known publisher in fashion industry. Let's see what's inside and I will give you a quick review of its context. For the library part, we give you clues, names, in types of bag, or you may see some iconic design bags, but doesn't know what's its name or name of accessories. Anatomy part, we'll explore more into what part of bag to be called. For me, as English is my second language, I'm glad to know what to call because formally I just know only a local call. Bag making part will give you an idea of process, tools, and a few more simplified pattern diagram. And this part will tell you about material information. Bag care and buying, this is the basic knowledge of how to take care of different materials or bags. Part 7, the longest section in this book that contains about 60 pages or 60 types of bags will give you the viewport of top, bottom, side, back, and angle diagram views. You can use this section as a reference of design or practice to trace or sketch. Because it's clean drawing lines, we will give you an easy way to follow. Well, I hope my quick review of Fashionary Back Design book will show you what this book is all about. And I hope this can help you. You can apply the code CRAFTMANGUS10 for a 10% discount at fashionary.org. This is one of the sketchbooks for the past years of my teaching back making and pattern making. I'd like to use a pen for drawing. A gel or ballpoint pen is okay. I'm kind of messy hand with carbon. And I normally draw everything in my head with eyes open, like to look at the shelf, or look at the figure of people and see how it goes. Because you can scale the size of the bag easily, and then transfer the idea to the paper. If you are going to design some bag, you might need to know what type of bag that is your goal, and also the size of it. The size you can imagine by thinking about what item the owner will carry with the bag. You can power up every whole item and think about them, then the details. The design process is not fixed, no right or wrong, it depends. Because many times back designer, pattern maker, or back maker are like architect arguing with engineer, can be back and forth thinking. Sometimes, after the back was finished, it needs to test for a month and have to redo it all over again, so no worries. Alright, for the tote bag, the main body is very large piece of the leather. I pick around the back part, and in the pattern piece, I glue all the border of it, so it will be help hold the paper in place. For the straight line, sometimes I use a steel ruler to help as well, so you can hold it parallel to the leather that is worked like charmed. And try to move your hand that holds the piece parallel synchronizing to the cutting hand too. Peel out the pattern suddenly after finish so it will prevent the glue stain. For the bottom part, I choose to cut the round corner first, but you can knife and cut the leather lightly about halfway. Then you can press and cut with your full weight. The first slice will create a road for you, and the second slice will keep you cut on track. I use my ring and little finger help stabilize my hand. For the part in which that need to be stitched from inside and turned out, I use about 0.8mm thickness. It's not too thin. Bottom part, you can do it all round. The main body, every side except top and side of the top of the surface. Okay, now we'll do the stitching line on both sides. Use divider, 
The trick is to fall fall down angles of it. You can draw inside out or outside in, it's okay. But for me, I prefer inside out, so it won't block my eyesight. I make it for 3.5 mm. I used 8 prongs of pricking iron and 4 prongs overlap over the previous 4. It's good to control the straight line. But if you have 5, 3 on 3 is good as well. For this edge paint part, I swapped with my wife as she is so great in art and painting. Use soft sponge dauber to absorb less of paint primer, then apply one time to all the edges necessary. Use applicator or round boost stick is okay. Apply the color primer if available. After get real dry, apply the paint for the first round and patiently wait. Then the second round. Please check with the paint supplier. Each brand has different formulas. The handle part, I skive because I need to use two layers of leather bee stitch and I don't want to make it too thick. The top layer I make it 1.3 to 1.4 mm. And for the back or lining side, I thin it to 0.8 mm so that the overall sum will be around 2.2 mm. To draw the line for stitch, you can move your writing hand as I do. Or you can hold your writing hand still and pull the strap with your opposite hand and back to writing hand again when it's become the free form. To do the pull method, you need to hold divider close to the tipping point. Then use the middle finger to stabilize the strap. Command your hand when back to the curved part. I usually use small needle awl to make a hole for the tip point stitching hole. Then place the outer edge of the first prong on the tiny hole and rotate until the second prong placed in the middle of stitching line. After that, you can do a normal protocol. And for the other side, place the inner edge of the first prong on the tiny hole and rotate until the second prong placed middle of the line and continue until it met the straight line part. Okay, it's time to layer them together. Guys, in some part of this video I might not speak. I think the graphic did explain well. So when the backing not too thin, it prevents the wrinkle when bending. I like to pricking for the holes, place layer 2, then all of them again. It might be too much work, but it helps me not create too big hole. Except you guys have thin blade pricking iron like KS or Sinner. I use super flat nose plier for flattening an easy shredder on the John James number 4. Now it's time for the most peaceful moment in back making.
leave two thread to the outer side so that when connect to the main body it will be a lot easier. And before connect to the main body, don't forget to burnish it all. I use about 7mm acid wrapped to the back side, it will be 8 to 8.5mm through the binding thickness and glue. Rough scratching is a must for this part, and also the bottom too. The overlap space was set about 10mm as the glue will hold well. But for now, install the handle before connecting the back. If you are going to stamp your brand, a die cut position on the pattern will help to position well. Make the hole again with all of the paste. But just for the connecting point, use the needle all around all and also the tipping point. Apply glue if you need more strength to the back stitch. Even on the back side. You need to finish the adjustable side string.
for some small area. Q-tip will help a lot to control applying glue. I start here because when backstitch ending will be a good balance. In this figure, it shows to stitch the adjustable string holder only on the front side. You see, I only apply glue only for 5 cm. There are reasons. In this minute, the glue quite spills, so I use the rubber bar to help bringing out the glue stain. All true, only for 5 cm stitching range. Stitching only this 5 cm, then leave the threads. Do the same on the opposite side. This tote bag, simple design, but prepare quite a lot. I cut 2mm piping core for combined with leather wrapper. A sponge is a great tool to use as a glue brush. Place piping to the middle line of the leather wrapper. Fold in half and leave the end open so we can make it a closed loop. You might see I have done scratch the bottom part already. This video part will explain more about it. Like why I did scratch in that width. It's the size of piping flat part. The pulling method can apply to many parts as it can control hang weight so well. Start placing in the center. And when it comes to the round corner part, some leather is flexible so well you can just bend it. But if the leather is too hard, I choose to make a slit cut then align it to the border. Add the loop end joint. Make sure you pin the leather edge already, and the leather must thin enough to feel smooth when it's on overlapped joint. To stitch the piping binding part, pre-punch on a flat plane will make it easier in prior to do it all layer. Use the tiny hole pricking iron will be best. To flip the bag outside in, stitching just for 5 cm as the previous scene helps in easier flipping and prevent the leather not too bruised. Make sure they are all center. You won't like to ruin them all. You'll see I just do it only straight line section, not place it all the bottom. Trust me, it might consume more times, but it will be easier for you to control. The holes you previously punched will be your guideline to make all through. This time use round all or needle all. Then also do the opposite side.
and now the narrow thread line. This method helped the letter not to slip away. I demonstrate this because I heard some of you ask me a lot about what glue I use which is stick really well. This way should help in case if the glue you use is not strong bond enough and it also helps you to do step by step. Turn turn turn. So when to turn back a leaf opening wide like this help ease your turn without a wrinkle. Shape it smoothly with a light mallet. You can use masking tape as a guideline to apply glue and also for thread line placing. Back to the adjustable string holder part. Adjustable loop. Make it as tight as possible. If you like a bag without lining, you can be finished now, but if not, continue to this lining part. If not get used to pin a needle, glue also can do. And if you can find the textile glue, better use it. Slit cut again at the round corner. I put the template inside so it can guide where the lining goes together. Continue and rise to the top of the opening. Trim the thick excess so it won't be too far from the leather back piece. And avoid cutting through the thread seams too.
the last attachment, top binding seal. Make sure it's stick well and lined well. Fold it back, start from the wide area of the straight line. Then wide open on the side. It will be temporarily wide enough to fold it down. Flatten it down again using wide nose plier bone folder or mallet. It's hard to draw a line like this, but I choose this way because it uses the top opening as a guide, punching them all. I almost forgot the last items, because this tone is big. It need to have something to hold the front and back together. Don't forget to strengthen by double loop stitch because this part will be used oftenly. Now it is true last stitch line. All right, the bag is finished and this book is great. It's worth it. And um, if you like to explore more of Back's knowledge, you can go to fashionary.com and search for Back Design in title. Just apply the code CRAFTMANGUSTIN for 10% discount. Also, there are other books and items, you might like them too. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you are not already subscribed, you can click subscribe now and click the bell icon so you can get notified of next video that I publish. And you can leave comment below so let me know what you think about it. Now I'm trying to talk more in videos. See you next time.